Chapter Twenty One of The Story of Mankind. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Story of Mankind by Hendrik van Loon. Chapter Twenty One A Summary. A short summary of chapters one to twenty. Thus far, from the top of our high tower, we have been looking eastward. But from this time on, the history of Egypt and Mesopotamia is going to grow less interesting, and I must take you to study the western landscape. Before we do this, let us stop a moment and make clear to ourselves what we have seen. First of all, I showed you prehistoric man, a creature very simple in his habits and very unattractive in his manners. I told you how he was the most defenceless of the many animals that roamed through the early wilderness of the five continents, but being possessed of a larger and better brain, he managed to hold his own. Then came the glaciers and the many centuries of cold weather, and life on this planet became so difficult that man was obliged to think three times as hard as ever before if he wished to survive. Since, however, that wish to survive was, and is, the mainspring which keeps every living being going full tilt to the last gasp of its breath, the brain of glacial man was set to work in all earnestness. Not only did these hardy people manage to exist through the long cold spells which killed many ferocious animals, but when the earth became warm and comfortable once more, prehistoric man had learned a number of things which gave him such great advantages over his less intelligent neighbors that the danger of extinction, a very serious one during the first half million years of man's residence upon this planet, became a very remote one. I told you how these earliest ancestors of ours were slowly plodding along when suddenly, and for reasons that are not well understood, the people who lived in the valley of the Nile rushed ahead, and almost overnight created the first centre of civilization. Then I showed you Mesopotamia, the land between the rivers, which was the second great school of the human race. And I made you a map of the little island bridges of the Aegean Sea, which carried the knowledge and the science of the old East to the young West, where lived the Greeks. Next I told you of an Indo-European tribe called the Hellenes, who thousands of years before had left the heart of Asia, and who had, in the eleventh century before our era, pushed their way into the rocky peninsula of Greece, and who, since then, have been known to us as the Greeks. And I told you the story of the little Greek cities that were really states, where the civilization of old Egypt and Asia was transfigured, that is a big word, but you can figure out what it means, into something quite new, something that was much nobler and finer than anything that had gone before. When you look at the map you will see how, by this time, civilization has described a semicircle. It begins in Egypt, and by way of Mesopotamia and the Aegean Islands it moves westward until it reaches the European continent. The first four thousand years Egyptians and Babylonians and Phoenicians, and a large number of Semitic tribes, please remember that the Jews were but one of a large number of Semitic peoples, have carried the torch that was to illuminate the world. They now hand it over to the Indo-European Greeks, who became the teachers of another Indo-European tribe, called the Romans. But meanwhile the Semites have pushed westward along the northern coast of Africa, and have made themselves the rulers of the western half of the Mediterranean, just when the eastern half has become a Greek, or Indo-European, possession. This, as you shall see in a moment, leads to a terrible conflict between the two rival races, and out of their struggle arises the victorious Roman Empire, which is to take this Egyptian, Mesopotamian, Greek civilization to the furthermost corners of the European continent, where it serves as the foundation upon which our modern society is based. I know this all sounds very complicated, but if you get hold of these few principles, the rest of our history will become a great deal simpler. The maps will make clear what the words fail to tell, 
and after this short intermission we go back to our story and give you an account of the famous war between Carthage and Rome. End of chapter 21 Read by Kara Schallenberg on Saturday, October 11, 2008 in San Diego, California.